Hey, what's up guys? Dedrick and Crystal Polite here in Raleigh, North Carolina, our home state, the capital of North Carolina. Super excited to be speaking at the Triangle RIA, yeah. Triangle Raleigh Real Estate Investors Association. We back outside, guys. We right. are outside, we're here. We're excited to meet and mingle and actually speak and share our story and hopefully can inspire some folks who are looking to grow into real estate investors. See you inside, guys. I'm glad to be back outside. How about you, honey? Um, let's see how the night go. <laughs> so we are Dedrick and Crystal Polite. We live in Burlington, North Carolina. Not too far. Does anyone know where Burlington is? Show of hands. Okay. Y'all know what B-Town is? Alamance County in the house? Anybody live in Alamance County or are we the only ones? Okay, okay. <laughs> Got a couple hands in the building. So we are originally from Boston, Massachusetts. So the way we ended up in North Carolina is my wife's family, her parents are from Burlington. People always ask us, like, how did you end up in Burlington, North Out of Carolina? All places. So we've been here 10 years. Um, this is home now. I'm a graduate of Amherst College. I'm a proud dropout from corporate America. Um, <laughs> my, thank you. My wife is a proud corporate America dropout as well. She's a graduate of Northeastern University in Boston. Uh, we both worked at a lot of big, uh, well-known companies, but we're really uh, passionate about uh, working for ourselves and building generational wealth for our, for our family. Um, this is us. This is us in, uh, that's in Cleveland, Ohio. We bought these two dilapidated uh, brick brownstones in Cleveland, Ohio, right before COVID. And our big master plan, we were going to remodel them and turn them into affordable housing and do all this grand stuff. And then COVID hit and... These contractors hit us with the prices <laughs> that it would cost to remodel them. Yeah, but it was also, it had a lot to do with, we were already rehabbing another four unit in Cleveland, and that was a nightmare. And I said, it's either we go ahead and sell these or end up in jail. So. Right. And then we got a demo notice where the city of Cleveland said they were right. going to knock the properties down. So we're like, we really have to sell. So we sold those before they got demoed. Um, this is kind of an eye chart, but um, we started real estate investing in 2017. So we've only been at this for about five years, um, going hard at it. Uh, we currently have a portfolio of um, over 70 rental units valued at over $5.5 million. Um, our portfolio, our ecosystem includes seven different companies. So we have a wholesaling and flipping company. We have a buy and hold company. What we else do we have? Short term rental. Short term rental. We have five Airbnbs. A new development company. Um, we have so many, sometimes we forget how right. many different entities we have. <laughs> My wife, so she's the visionary and she's a serial entrepreneur. So like every 13 days, she has a new company that she wants to start. Yep. So I have to be like, no, we already have enough. <laughs> Let's focus on what we got, got here. But I love it, though. Uh, we also have a mobile home park um, in Mevin, North Carolina. Anybody do mobile homes, mobile home parks? If you do, make sure you talk to us. Um, so how do we kind of split up between the two of us, right? So we're a couple, we're in business together. How do we operate in business together without killing each other? Right? We don't. <laughs> <laughs> we both have our own lanes, right? She's the visionary, I'm the integrator. So she comes up with these wild, crazy, wacky business ideas, and then I got to figure out how to implement and put it together. And a lot of times she helps with the implementation. Right, but they're not crazy because my ideas got us to where we at. <laughs> Right. She's always right. Mm. Most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, so our core focus is to build a high volume wholesaling business that's going to fuel our rental portfolio. So we got into the real estate investing game to build a massive portfolio of rentals and cash flow so we never have to work again. Um, and we did that by wholesaling houses. Anybody wholesale a house before? Show of hands. Wholesaling is amazing. It, it's amazing. It's basically being able to create cash out of thin air. And again, we take those profits from wholesaling and we buy rental properties. Then we've gotten into flipping houses. That helped us land a television show. So that's, that's our core focus. Um, one of the things we specialize in is marrying deals with money. So, you know, we run into people all the time who have money, whether it's in a savings account or 401k, it's not earning them any interest. So we help put their money to work. A lot of our deals actually hundred percent financing. So, um, we've built a, a, you know, sizable portfolio with very little of our own money. We've been able to leverage other people's money to build wealth. And that's why I love real estate. So this is just an example of a bird deal. Um, we bought this house for, when we buy this house, I think it was 43,000, there it goes, 43,000. This is in Burlington, North Carolina. Uh, we put 31,000 in the rehab. We uh, used private money. So a private lender um, loaned us $60,000 um, at 10% interest. Uh, we remodeled the house. Within six months, we were able to refinance it, got a $73,000 uh, refinance loan, paid back our private investor. And this property, Two, three years later, is now valued at 225000 So um, that's the power of real estate. We could rent this out as a regular rental, but we wanted to increase our cash flow. So we turned it into an Airbnb. So most people are like, are Airbnb in Burlington, North Carolina? Like, right. What are you thinking? It's not the beach. It's not the mountains. It's Burlington. <laughs> but it actually works. This, this property brings in 4500 bucks a month and uh, pretty substantial you know, $3,400 a month cash flow. And one of the great things about that property also that you can't see that the picture doesn't tell is it's sitting on a very sizable lot. <clears throat> so what I did was as soon as I seen it, I said, hey, listen, we're going to subdivide this lot. And that's exactly what we did. We subdivided the lot and now we're actually uh, meeting with our developers because we're going to build townhouses on the back end of this lot <clears throat> that is actually has another egress that a completely separate street from the back end. So we typically do that with every property that has a nice size lot. Even ones that we flip, we make sure it, the house, the property in the lot is subdivided before that sale goes through. Um, because we are going to capture um, all the money that we can off of that lot. You're not going to get an acre from us unless we have no interest <laughs> in that land. <laughs> and that's why you're the visionary. There you go. You saw that. Good job, baby. There you go. Um, whoa. Let's fast forward it. Okay, you want to talk a little bit about this one? So this was um, a wholesale deal. Uh, contracted price was 90000 I think we got this one. Was this the one we got from the tired landlord? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, we actually got this one along with a ton of other properties from this one tired landlord. We met him back in 20... 2018. 2018, and he had a four unit that he wanted us to buy. $50,000. We were just getting into it. My husband was like, oh, okay, let's do it. All of our bids for rehabbing this property came back over 100000 So Over 150000 Over 150000 we So he like, was like, yeah, no, we're not going to no. do this. Well, me, I was handling the marketing. So I had already put this guy's information into our software, so I seen how many properties he owned. So I told my husband, I said, listen, I don't care how we have to do this deal. We're going to do it. So he was a whale. He owned like almost 100, 50 to 100 properties. And he was already 80 something years old. I said, listen, if you make good on your word to buy this property, he will sell us his portfolio. My husband's like, oh, I don't know, this is $50,000. So I said, listen, I don't care what it is, buy the property. We can figure out what we're gonna do with it later. So he ended up buying it. We closed on the property, ended up turning around. We was like, we're not rehabbing this property. At the time it we needed were newbies. Everything. It yeah. needed a full gut rehab. We had no idea what we were doing, so we turned around and threw it back on the MLS, which is 
Um, yeah, we put it on the MLS as is. I think we paid 45000 for this fourplex, put it on the MLS as is, sold it for 55000 Not a huge profit, but again, we, we established a relationship and yep. trust with this seller of doing what we would say we, we would do. Uh, that led to this property. Same seller had a property in Durham. This is in Durham. Um, the problem with this property is it had a failed septic system. So it was a, some type of sand filtration septic. Uh, Chris, Chris knows about this one. He passed on this. Um, we ended up selling it to a cash buyer for 120, made a nice little profit on it. Um, and this person, you know, I don't know if this was second or third buyer who bought it after this, they recently sold this property for 223. So tons of value there. Um, that's just one wholesale deal right there. Um, multifamily. So we've been able to build a portfolio of apartments all through seller financing. So for those who don't know, seller financing is the seller is the bank. So instead of you going to Wells Fargo or BB&T or Truist or whatever they call it now and getting a loan and having to show your pay stubs and your tax returns, the seller is holding the note. So you're paying the mortgage to the seller and not the bank. Powerful, super powerful. So this is a four unit apartment building in Graham, North Carolina that we were able to purchase through seller financing. From that same, same tired landlord. The one who, by the way, said, I'm going to sell you this one, but I'm not selling you anymore. That's so what he said. So we kept chipping away at his portfolio, one. right? And after that first property, the four unit, he said, hey, well, listen, I got faith drive. I really want to get rid of this. And I told Dedrick, I said, buy the property. I don't care what it costs. Buy the property, and we will get the rest of his portfolio. He had he a right. son who was managing all his properties, and he was like, well, I mean, if he wanted to get rid of them, he can give them to his son. I said he'd have done that already. And this is where I tell people in real estate the emotional intelligence comes into play. That's why I married her. She's not only beautiful, but smart as well. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> I tried, boo. Well. Um, but I told them, if you make good on your word, and you guys know how the South is and just men in general, you know, your word is your bond, right? So I told him, I said, listen, if you buy this property, we will get the rest of his portfolio. Even after he said, I'm not selling you anymore after this, he was very stern. This is what I do, young man. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not selling you anymore. And Dedrick said, well, he got a son. I said, yes, but if he was going to sell to his son, he'd have done it already. He has a daughter. If, he was go if she wanted to take it over, he'd have made that very clear to you in the conversation. But what ended up happening is because Dedrick made good on his word every single time, even with the faith drive, he was, oh, I'm not going to be able to get rid of this because we didn't want it. I said, find someone to get this property. Found someone to take it. I said, now go after the mobile home park. Go after the four unit that we wanted in downtown um, Graham. Go after the other duplex. Dedrick immediately introduced the conversation. He was like, let's talk about it. Literally yep. just that easy. He was like, let's talk about it. And he said, listen, the reason why I'm going to sell you the rest of my portfolio is because you made good on everything you said. And so then I told Dedrick, say, who was right? You know, <laughs> you, know you gotta come back around sometimes and remind them. She made me say that she was right, and she was. She's, she's always right. Um, so the, the numbers on this one, uh, we bought it for 160,000. Tons of deferred maintenance. It needed everything, pretty much. Um, the, the owner had no mortgage. It was all free and clear. So. I said, right, here's how we'll do it. I'll give you a $10,000 down payment. You hold back a mortgage for $150,000. I'll make you monthly payments of $750 per month for 84 months. Mind you, this seller is 90-something years old. Yep. And he literally said to me, he said, Dedrick, I don't, I don't think I'll even be here in 84 months. <laughs> I'm 90-something. But I trust you. You kept your word. And me and my wife have been landlords for over 50 years. And we're used to getting cash flow from all these rental properties. So if something happens to me, I want that cash flow to keep coming into her. So I'm going to do the deal. And there you go. So this is some before and after. So that's kind of how it looked after. We actually highlighted this um, property as the season finale of our television show, 5050 Flip on A&E. So this is uh, episode six. Anyone interested in hearing the full story? This thing gave me a lot more gray hairs. <laughs> Once we got into it, we found out that the foundation was infested with termites and the building was about to collapse and all this stuff we didn't know before we yeah. bought it. So this one, but this is how it looks now. 
<laughs> yeah, but it, it definitely had, what, 30, 40 years of deferred maintenance? Oh, yeah. Not like five or 10, like 40 years of deferred maintenance. And at one point, it used to be the, they said, the most grand house in the neighborhood. Um, so that was, our job was to really bring this house back to its former glory. Um, and two of the units are Airbnbs. Um, one of the units is when we took over the uh, Roach Motel. Oh, yeah, this is the Roach um, Motel. Oh, it was infested with German roaches. That's what it's too. called during the show, the Roach Motel. Um, it came with a tenant who had been there. 20 years? 21 maybe? years. Miss so Joyce. She, she'd Ms. been there Joyce. 20 years paying $400 a month for 20 years. Right, right. Y'all, that's the same thing I said. What? <laughs> $400 for 21 years. And of course, so when we had to rehab it, I said, listen, I want, I would want someone to treat my mother a specific way, right? If she, this is where her, when her husband passed away, this is where she moved. And for me, it was huge for me to make sure that we took care of her the way I would want someone to do my mother or my grandmother. Right. So um, we literally put her up in corporate housing for three months. So while we're rehabbing, we put her in a um, furnished rental, and then after we got done with the rehab, we moved her back in at a discounted rent rate. Right. And, uh, she loved it. She was like, you would look at her as if our grandmother. Absolutely. Like, How would we want someone to treat our grandmother? So that felt good being able to do that. Um, this is a fix and flip. Uh, find it, fund it, flip it is our model. This is a before and after. Uh, this property is on Raw Hut Street in Burlington, which is like, it's supposed to be the hood. Everybody told us, don't flip a property on Raw Hut Street. Like, you'll get shot. You know, no one's going to buy it. Matter of fact, I I'm think like, you I said up, that, too. I grew up in the hood. What are you talking about? Hey, so, I think you said it, too. But the cool thing about this property is we noticed the trickle-down effect. It was when yes. you remodel and fix up a, a house, we noticed that the next-door neighbor started fixing up their house. Yep. And two doors down, they started, you know, painting their house. So it, it, really what we do can have an impact on neighborhoods, which is what we saw with this house right here. Uh, that's another flip we did in Mebane before and after. I think Catherine Roberts. Catherine bought this house. Yep. So shout out to Catherine. Didn't Catherine buy that four unit, the very first one? Oh, yeah. yeah so it. Catherine, uh, shout out to Catherine Roberts. She bought the four unit, the first one we talked about. Yep. She bought that from us. And they did an amazing job bringing that property back to life. And she also bought this property rehab. We gave you this one in good condition, though. <laughs> So she has a renter in there. She's cash flowing on that one. Um, there you go. So that's the numbers on that one. So we do have our own television show. We've been blessed to be on a national platform called 5050 Flip. So if you haven't heard of it or seen it, it's on A&E On Demand. So if you got Hulu or any of those streaming services, 5050 Flip, check it out. Uh, this is us on set. And uh, right now we're gearing up for season two of 5050 Flip. So we put in North Carolina on the map. Right. <laughs> And I mean, yeah. we've had, we even have that. a lot of great friends who are in real estate, even ones you'll see, um, Chris and Stephanie, who will be coming up as well. And of course, we had to, they had to make an appearance on the episode oh, as yeah. well. Oh, yeah, they made a cameo on one um, of the episodes. So we really do like making sure we bring other individuals, anyone who's around us, um, really into our world and what we're doing, because this was hectic. Like, I, we ain't going to sugarcoat it, right? First season, and they, of course, our agent, everyone said, hey, listen, it's okay. It's okay. First seasons are always like this, right? And I was like, this is, like, <laughs> there's People don't no realize way. how much work goes into filming a television show, which we learned. It's another full-time job. So it's like 50 hours a week we were on set filming. 10 hours a, a day, crew. five days a week. While running seven, we have maybe five companies at the time. From June 28th Two kids. to December, the first week of December. Literally no vacations, five days a week. And if they could have had weekends, they would have won weekends until I had to be like, hell no. Um, but it was a full-time job. Like when we would see our friends, even when Chris and them came to set, they was like, oh my God, how is it? I was like, I might. I'm like, I might. Wait till the mic come on. <laughs> you know, I couldn't talk to him the way I wanted to talk to him. It was a nightmare, and but we didn't know what we didn't know, right? 
they said, oh, it's, it's going to be like two to three days, right? Two to three days a week. Your lives won't change. It went from two to three days a week to five days a week, oh, a couple hours a day, to 10 hours every day. I'm in hair and makeup every morning by 8 a.m. Then they're like, oh, we won't need you every day. We have B stories. We're going to be following your other team members. No. Me and Dedrick was who they followed every single day. If there was another team member, they had to be in a shot with us. Then it turns out they use no B stories. Right, so we shot all of this content, but it was still amazing. It came out amazing. It did. It was, no, it was still it was an incredible blessing. I it, mean, it our was. business has exploded from it. We've gotten properties, investors. So it's it's an incredible blessing to be able to be on national TV. So here's how you contact us. Uh, we are cash buyers. So if there's anyone with deals in the room that you're looking to sell, we buy all over North Carolina any price, any location, any condition. I don't care if it's land, single family houses, apartments, trailers, trailer parks, we right. will buy it. Send us your deals. You can email info at politeproperties.com. That's our website. Our phone number's up there. Uh, we're on social media, Instagram under Dedrick Polite and Crystal Polite. And of course, Be Polite Properties. We also have a YouTube channel. And um, we're excited and honored to be here. So thanks for having us. Thank you guys. All right, guys, we are just wrapping up here at the Triangle Real Estate Investors Association. It was amazing. We met some amazing um, real estate investors. We're in Raleigh, North Carolina on the campus of NC State University. Again, yes. we got to meet other investors. We got to share our story and hopefully inspire some folks. So if you have a RIA, a Real Estate Investors Association in your area and you want us to come and speak, send us an email and we may just show up at your RIA. You never know. But most importantly, make sure you are attending your area, right? Because that's where a lot of deals are done, right? It's not at some of the major conferences. Get into these smaller rooms with people who are where you're at or higher and start picking their brains, right? So every state has them, a lot of the cities. Make sure you guys are with your local real estate meetups. Um, anything else? That's it. Hey, remember, it, it costs, costs nothing, nothing to, to be, be polite. polite.